Hey developers, so welcome back to the fifth video of this code editor series. And in the previous video, we got the code editor to be configured and was able to run the code and output it in the dev tools right here. Now in this video, what we're going to do is get the input in the dev tools and find a way to put it in the console right here, our custom console. Now to do this, we're going to create our own console object. So instead of when we call console.log or any of those, it will run our object and we can do some, some different things to it. So let's get started with this and jump right into the code. So inside the code in the editor.js file, the first thing I want to do is create an array to store the console messages um, that we're going to loop through later and print to the screen. So I'm going to do a let of console messages and it's just going to be a simple array. Now to show you what I have in mind, I want to have an array of objects that will have a message such as let's say hello world and a class so we can style the, um, the console log or the log depending on what type it is, if it's string, objects, uh, if it's a number, things like that. So it'll be like log or log dash dash error, or maybe a string. So that is the intended goal right there. And I'm going to put this back to an empty array. And with that in place, what we're going to do now is to create another file uh, inside the lib.js folder. And we're going to call it editor-console.js. And we're also going to bring that in in the index.html right under the editor.js. So let's copy this down. I'm going to do dash console. Now inside the editor dash console, we can get started by creating a console object. So we're going to do let console equals. So what we're going to do here is actually use an iffy or an immediately uh, invoked function expression because we still want to have access to the old win um, the window.console to use that inside our console. So I'm just going to do a, a function. I'm going to take in the old console and to immediately evoke it right after. Now inside there, we're going to take in as an argument the window.console right here. And we're going to return an empty object uh, for now. So the first thing we can do is to bring in the functions like log, info, warn, and error, just to copy the old console, what the console already has. So we're just going to do a uh, log function. And we're going to just do a, let's see. I'm going to do the old console.log and it's going to take in a parameter of some kind of text it needs to log out and we can just do a text right here. So that will use the window.console to log out the text right here. And we're going, we can do the same thing for the info warn and error. So I'm just going to copy that in right now quickly. Now with that copied in, I just change this to make it look the same as the others. So essentially what we have here now is if we do a console.log, it will call our console objects and this function right here, which will use the window.console to log out in the dev tools. But we can do extra things now. We can, um, for example, in the error, if there's an error, we can push a message to the array that we defined before. So later on, we can loop through it and print it out to our custom console. Now we'll do this one first since it's the easiest. We can now do a console messages, the array that I set, and we can push an object if there's an error. So we can just do a message and I'm going to do um, some backticks for template literals. And I'm going to do error.name 
is going to be an error.message. And as for the class, it's simply going to be a log and log dash dash error. And that should be a comma right there. Now every single time there's an error or a console log a console dot error, it will push a message to our array. So the main one we need to deal with is actually the log function. Because as you know, if you do console log, you can do multiple arguments. And if you have multiple arguments, uh, the dev tools will print out each and every single one of them in one line. So the first thing we need to do is to find out how many arguments are passed into that log function if it's called. And one way we can do this is by using the arguments uh, variable. So as an example, just to show you, I'm going to call, uh, let's a variable called args array, so arguments array. And I'm going to do array dot from arguments. And I'm going to old console dot log the args array. So be sure to use the old console because if you use a regular console dot log, you're likely going to get an infinite loop. So if I go back to the code editor now, and let's say we have one argument, I'm just going to clear this. We have one argument, we have one um, element in the array. And if I do, let's say one, uh, two, two, one, now we have three arguments. So in a regular console dialog, we would see hello world and two and one. So this is the way we can check if there's multiple arguments, just check the length of the array. So back in the code editor now, what we're going to do is to, so we're going to return a ternary operator. So we're going to look at the args array and check if the length is not equal to one, which means there are multiple arguments. And then we're going to call a function called this.log multiple arguments. And we'll pass through the args array. Otherwise, we'll do a this.log single um, arguments. And for that, we can just pass in the text. Because that text will just be the one argument anyway. So these functions aren't defined right now. But we can go ahead and do that uh, right here. So we can do log single um, argument, make that into a function, which takes in a log, let's just call it log item, an item to save in our array. So in this function, all we need to do is uh, we can old console log whatever the log item is here. And I'm just going to remove the old console log here. And now we need to save um, the log into our an array to print it in our custom console. So similar to what we did for the error right here, I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to paste it right here. And now what we need to do is, is do a bit more work because for example, in the class, the string uh, when logged could be different types. So it could be string or number or other ones. And as for the message, depending on the type, the format will be a little different. For example, strings have some quotes. Um, and let's say we have arrays will have the word array and then the array right next to it. So we need to do some formatting and some type um, ways to get the, the specific type of the the log. So we need to get these functions created as well. So I'm going to create two more functions right here. I'm going to do a format args output. So depending on the argument or whatever argument is passed in, we can get a formatted string depending on the type. And this should just be a function. And we'll pass in the arguments. 
and another uh, function would be called get type. And that will also take in an argument. So then eventually what we can do here is we can simply in the template literal we can just do uh, not in template literal, we can just do this the format args output and we can pass through the log item. So whether that's a, a true or false or a number, we can get the specific string returned back as what we need. And for this one, this will need to be a template literal as well. And we can do log, log dash dash, and we can do this dot get type of the log item we're looking at uh, right now. So for the get type function, I'm just going to copy and paste this in. Essentially, what it's doing is it's checking the type of the argument. So if it's hello world, then it will be a string. Uh, if it's a boolean, so it's true or false, we will turn the string as a boolean. And it's just getting the type for each, each type there is uh, right here. So pretty simple stuff there. And in the formags ar uh, args output, I'll also copy in some code here. And essentially what this is doing is, for example, let's say that the argument was a hello world. Now when we print this to the console, we want it to have some quotes, right? And this is what this function will do. It will uh, format depending on the type. So we'll set a variable here and we do a switch statement. And once we get the type of the argument, if it's a string, we'll add quotes around it. Uh, if it's an object, we want to have the specify an object and then the actual object right next to it. Same thing for the array right here. And if it's default, we don't do anything to it. So you could essentially do uh, more with different types if you wanted to. But these are the main, main ones right here to mimic what MDN has. So with those two helper functions defined, the last thing we need to deal with is logging multiple arguments. So I'm going to create a function on top of the single argument to log uh, multiple arguments as a function and we're going to take in uh, the arguments right here. So as you saw before in the dev tools, if there was multiple arguments, it'd be an array with multiple elements. So what we're going to do is first things first, we're going to create uh, a variable called the current log because if there's a console log with multiple arguments then it will be all be printed on one line. So this is what we're going to append each argument to the string uh, once, this, once the type is formatted. So now we're going to deal with multiple arguments by looping through uh, the array dot from arguments and we're going to do a for each sorry we don't need to do array dot from because it's in it's already an array so we just do arguments dot for each and then for each argument we're going to run a function and all we're going to do here is append to our current log so we're going to do current log uh, plus equals and this dot format args, our format args function, will pass through the arguments. And we're also going to do a little space at the end uh, just so just so we can have some spacing between the log. So after this, we also want to console log it to the dev tools. So we'll use the old console. And for this one, we're going to do our log dot apply. And I'm going to do all console and the arguments. So with the apply method, essentially what we're doing is calling the log function of the old console, the window.console, and we're passing through uh, an array of arguments that we want to, with, to run with this function. So this is only to allow it to run with uh, multiple arguments properly. And the last thing we want to do for this function is just to push to our array. So that's the important part. And we can just copy the bottom one right here. 
and instead of this format args, we can just do our current log right here. And I'm also going to just set this as a default because the current log will be one whole string with a bunch of different uh, arguments. So we'll be able to tell the type properly. So we'll just do a default uh, log for this one. Now with all that being done, we can verify this by uh, let's do a, an old console and we'll log out the console messages to ensure that we have the messages that we want so we can print it out later in our console. So I'll do the same thing here for our log single arguments and we can test this in the browser right now. So if I run this right now, you can see that we have an array with an object right here with a class of log dash dash string and a message of hello world. And if I do multiple arguments with the true and let's say 100, run this, you can see that it gets console, out, uh, console logged out properly with all the arguments right next to each other. And in our messages, we have the first one and the new one, which will be a log of defaults and the message exactly the same as what we have right here. So back in the editor, we've essentially reached the goal of having an our array field with all the messages that we want to print to our custom console. And in the next video, we'll uh, loop through that array and then we'll print it out to our console right here. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. And in the next video, in the final video, we'll finally have our console logs right here. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the next one.